Hello, it's uh, John Heaton. Time to do another Stones review. Today I'm going to review Let It Bleed from 1969, released 5th of December 1969. Number one in the UK. No, sorry, number. I've got number one in the UK, number three in the US written down here. Might be the other way around. Uh, anyway, this is a US copy with a very interesting cover. One of their best covers, I think, uh, with it all going to pieces on the back. And uh, what you don't find in some of the later reissues is the musician credits on every track, which tells you that Brian Jones, <coughs> though he'd left the band a few months before this album came out, <coughs> does play on two tracks on this album. And uh, Mick Taylor, the replacement, also plays on two tracks. Other than that, it's just the, uh, the four members um, doing the honours themselves without extra assistance other than Jimmy Miller, the producer who does play drums on uh, You Can't Always Get What You Want and Leon Russell guests on piano on Live With Me. So the two tracks that Mick plays on are Country Honk uh, and I can't find the other one, uh, Live With Me, that's it. Uh, Brian Jones auto harp on You Got The Silver and percussion on Midnight Rambler. So this is on the American, the London label uh, in the US, the US pressing. It, I just read the other day, it came with a poster, although I've never seen a copy with the poster in the flesh as it were. So it'd be good to pick that one up. Probably quite rare, I guess, with the poster, a bit like the copy of Exile on Main Street with the postcards is, I saw that the other day in the London market, sorry, in a UK market in Shropshire. Uh, and the guy was charging 150 quid for the copy of Exile with the postcards. <laughs> so I politely declined. But uh, anyway, it would be nice to see the poster. I read, I was doing some research on this, and the cake here is designed by none other than Delia Smith when she was unknown, which is quite interesting, later to become a famous um, cookery book uh, expert. <clears throat> and I'm not sure what happened to the figures here of the stones who has the originals of those? Be quite, quite interesting collector's item. But as I say, very nice concept here. Although let it bleed. A bit of a copy of, or a bit of a parody of Let It Be from the Beatles. Although the Let It Be album hadn't been released by this stage, it had been recorded in January of '69, and the Stones would have definitely known of the song's existence. So anyway, that's okay. The Stones and the Beatles were close in the '60s, and they. You know, they in, in many ways followed each other's examples and pushed each other to higher levels and stuff. There's nothing wrong with that. Um, album recorded November 68 parts in parts and then February to July 69 and then October to November 69. Uh, Olympic Studios in London, which is in Barnes, southwest London. Electra Studios in LA and Sunset Sound in LA. It's a 42 minute album, so just about the Ideal length for an album produced by Jimmy Miller, uh, who would also uh, also had produced. Uh, I think I'm right in saying Beggar's Banquet and would produce Sticky Fingers and Exile, um, and he also produced the late '60s Traffic albums, among others. So, uh, some reviews: uh, a heavy and passionately erotic album of hard rock and blues said one critic and another one said whether it was spiritual menstrual or visceral the stones made sure you would come home covered in blood well that's a little bit unpleasant but uh, i can see the point of the, what the review is trying to say uh it's there's some pretty shocking lyrics on here and i mean shocking in the in the literal sense of the word um but you know, I think, uh, and, uh, and again, I would just say straight off, this song contains some of the best Stones work and, uh, and some not quite top-notch material, but I'm li liable to get into trouble with Stones fans for saying that because I know it is a highly revered album. And as a Beatles fan, I get annoyed when people say the White Album is patchy. So uh, it's just my opinion, it doesn't mean anything. And uh, I've got more good things to say about this album than anything else. Uh, 
So before I go through the tracks, uh, this cover was one of, I think, 10 covers made into stamps by the Royal Mail in 2010, which is quite interesting. Uh, there's on the sleeve it says this record should be played loud which had also been the instruction on the cold turkey plastic owner band single from a couple months earlier and I think on the instant karma subsequent plastic owner band single so that's an interesting uh, thing that the Beatles and Stones also had in common uh, tea and sympathy is Someone is credited with Tea and Sympathy on this album, which, is, which I found interesting because I think that's, that actually predates any use of that phrase by John Lennon. I uh, can't find who is credited with Tea and Sympathy now, but here we go. Jock, a guy called Jock. Anyway, Mal Evans was credited with Tea and Sympathy on John Lennon Plastic Owner Band. So that's just a little, in, another interesting bit of trivia I picked up. Um, this album was on Decca in the UK, of course. I've mentioned the poster. So let's go to the tracks, shall we? Um, well, it opens up with one of the best tracks of the 60s, no less. Give Me Shelter. It's absolutely glorious piece of music. And again, yeah, they were right. It does have to be played loud. Tremendously atmospheric opening. Uh, guitars from Keith, all of the guitars from Keith, Jimmy Miller's on percussion, N Nicky Hopkins is on piano, I forgot to mention him, uh, and just brilliant build up and then when the uh, the drums come in and then the guitar solo later in the song, it's just an absolute masterpiece and it's in the Stones top five songs of all time without question, might even be their greatest track. Give me shelter, and I sorry I forgot to mention the lady who does the superb backing vocals, Mary Clayton. She is on fire in this song, singing rape, murder. It's just a kiss away. It's just a kiss away. Again, lyrics a little bit dubious. Not sure what they mean, but uh, it's kind of summing. I think one review actually summed up said this album summed up how dark the times were, or how. Well, obviously, uh, it had come just two years after the Summer of Love when the Beatles were proclaiming all you need is love and everyone else seems to follow their example. And then a couple of years later, it had all gone a little bit sour, uh, culminating in the Altamont concert, uh, which the Stones gave and someone got killed in the audience by the Hells Angels who were supposed to be uh, the bouncers looking after the crowd and they overreacted to a member of the crowd and uh, uh, yeah a guy got stabbed so that was pretty dark and yeah this so this album is and it's around about the time of the Charles Manson murders which were in August 69 but I'll give the Stones credit this album was recorded before that album came out but it's uh, a little bit hard to separate the two events or as you know, the Stones were a little bit provocative in their lyrics on occasions, and I think this is one album where maybe with hindsight they, they went a little bit too far with the lyrics, but, you know, it's only my opinion. Uh, so Give Me Shelter, as a piece of music, it's just brilliant. Uh, and then we've got Love in Vain, which is a cover uh, song of the blues track, and uh, it's just brilliant. Um, love it to bits, a bit like uh, No Expectations from the previous album. Uh, it's Keith's doing. Keith is doing the slide guitar on this one, whereas Brian Jones had done it on No Expectations. And uh, when the train left the station, with two lights on behind, uh, it's just just brilliant, heartfelt lyrics, brilliantly sung by Jagger. He can really sing a slow blues, and this is really suits his style. Really suits the band. I wish they'd done more of this type of material when they were at their peak. Uh, and then, sorry, the order of the songs on the back cover is not matching the record, so I better cover the, the, as it appears on the record. Then we have Country Honk, which is a kind of throwaway country version of Honky Tonk Woman. And as a, as a kind of, well, I'm sure diehard phone fans of the Stones would disagree, but one is tempted to say what would the album have been like if they'd included the single Honky Tonk Woman on this album. It would have definitely made it a stronger album. But it, 
already been a single in July of 69, so it was already six months old, so that's the reason they left it off, and I can, I can understand that. Having said that, Get Back was 15 months old by the time it appeared on Let It Be, and that song strengthens that album, so I think they probably could have got away with putting it on in the same way as putting on Jumping Jack Flash and uh, stuff onto um, Beggar's Banquet, but but they didn't. This is the album we're reviewing, so it's obviously inferior to the, the single, as I say, a little bit throwaway, but you know, quite, quite fun, I suppose, to listen to occasionally. And then Live With Me is arranged by Leon Russell, who guests on piano with Nicky Hopkins. And this is one of those tracks which doesn't really do a lot for me. Uh, again, just my opinion. Uh, it's okay, it's just nothing great. And then the album side one closes with an absolute Stones classic, Let It Bleed. Uh, great vocals, great tune, great piano from Ian Stewart. And uh, we all need someone we can lean on. And if you want to, you can lean on me. And then the lyrics get a little bit more risque as the song goes on. But uh, I think it works in this context. It's, uh, it's a great ballad. And I love the use of piano on it, and it's one of the Stones' very finest songs of their entire career, I think, even though it's not, not a rocker. And I don't believe they've played it live, or if they have, hardly at all. Uh, then we got side two, Midnight Rambler. This is a controversial song. Uh, and it's not one of my favourites, and it's long enough on here, six and a half, six minutes 52, but when sometimes when they do it in concert, it goes on for up to 12 minutes. and. Uh, a little bit boring, I think, for me, but again, I'm liable to get into trouble for saying that. Uh, I think the lyrics are very controversial, as I say, and uh, a little bit on the wrong side of good taste. Um, as late as 2011, in a book called The Better Angels of Our Nature, Steve Pinker said, uh, talked about this song and said, uh, the counterculture's glorification of dissoluteness shaded into indulgence of violence. Personal violence was sometimes celebrated in song as if it were just another form of anti-establishment protest. He says the song acted out a rape murder by the Boston Strangler, and he sees this as an example of how in the 60s counterculture, the control of women's, women sexually was seen as a prerequisite of men. Well, I don't feel that strongly about this song, but uh, or have that st strong opinion either way, but it, it's not one of my favourite Stones tracks, musically or lyrically, let's just put it like that. And it opens side two, it's one of their better known numbers, so I won't knock it completely, but uh, that's just my opinion. Then we've got You Got the Silver, which uh, is pretty much Keith's debut as a complete solo vocalist. He had sung a line or two on uh, um, between the buttons and uh, the opening line of uh, Salt of the Earth from Beggar's Banquet, but this the first time he'd be given a complete solo and it's just brilliant. And uh, I grew to love Keith's contributions on Stone's albums from this point on really. They often, they often were a highlight, uh, certainly were a highlight on uh, uh, the, the best track on um, Steel Wheels for me is slipping away the last track, and uh, many an album where Keith's track is, uh, you know, up there with with the best Mick, Mick tracks, um, and this 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 is a good example of that. I mean, it's not as good as Give Me Shelter, but it's pretty damn fine. And Brian Jones is playing also harp, as I said. Then we get Monkey Man, which is uh, a really decent r guitar riff from Keith, uh, and Nicky Hopkins is on piano. Uh, interesting that Nicky Hopkins had played with the Beatles on Revolution and then with the Stones here and then on Imagine with John Lennon and on Goat's Head Soup and Exile on Main Street with the Stones. So he was uh, very much in demand session musician and I can see why because his piano playing is uh, always excellent. Uh, and Monkey Man, mainly, mainly memorable for the guitar riff because uh, as a song it's not it's nothing brilliant, uh, <laughs> but you know, the Stones is not always about the song, it's about the riff, and uh, they get a really good groove, and, I, and this song, when it's played loud, is, is 
pretty damn excellent. Uh, then we get the epic. You can't always get what you want. Um, starts off with a choir. Uh, I think it's the Royal Bark Choir, who quickly disassoci disassociated them itself from the album, citing its relentless drug ambiance. Anyway, it's a good introduction to the song, and then Mick does the vocal duties with, a, with Keith on acoustic guitar, um, and then the choir comes in later. Kind of a bit of an epic, you know, one reviewer said it was a bit like the Beatles' Hey Jude in, in, that, in the sense that, you know, it had an orchestra and a big chorus and stuff. I mean, I can see the point, I suppose. Uh, it it's maybe goes on a bit too long, it's seven and a half minutes, um, and it doesn't have a middle eight of, uh, as such, so it's a little bit repetitive. Uh, but lyrically, it's a, a timeless message. Um, and the Stones did this at the Rock and Roll Circus in December of 68, so they'd had this song in the bag. Uh, they'd had it written for the previous year before this album came out, so that's interesting. And worth checking out Mick's performance of that song on the Rock and Roll Circus. I think it was about three in the morning, but you wouldn't, you wouldn't have guessed it from his energy level and going down into the crowd and singing <laughs> in the ears of these uh, teenage girls who didn't know what to make of it and were pretty, pretty much bowled over. So that's, that's worth watching. So that's the end of the album. Uh, it's one of the Stones' very best albums, without question. It's not my favorite. I prefer Sticky Fingers. I think it's more consistent. And uh, I prefer a couple of the others to this, but uh, this album, when it's good, it's absolutely brilliant. And Gimme Shelter, the opening track, possibly the Stones' greatest opening track of their entire career. Opening track's always important for an album, in my opinion. And the rest of the album's pretty damn good, with a couple of not quite so good numbers, but on the whole, this is Stones at their best. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.